AWS has many different services, but there's one service that is probably more important to understand than the other ones, and that is AWS IAM, Identity and Access Management. The reason the service is important to understand is because this is the service you will use to create users and grant them permissions to the different AWS services under your account. In today's video, we're going to look at the different options the Identity and Access Management service provides. We'll look at groups, users, roles, and policies, and try to understand how are they different from one another and what each one of them is used for. Let's get started by looking at policies. Policies are the different permissions that we can assign to groups, users, or roles. An example policy would be to control a Lambda function or only to deploy it, or maybe policy to create a bucket under S3. A policy can also be a combination of other policies. Let's look at an example. If we'll search for S3, we can see that there are AWS managed policies that are ready to use, but they're pretty limited. We have a policy for full access to S3 or a read-only access for S3. But we don't have more specific policies like only to create a bucket or delete it. But for that, we can create a custom policy. So let's try to do it. Let's choose S3 as a service. Under the Actions section, we can define which specific permissions we want to allow this policy to perform. We'll give this policy the permission to list all buckets and then to create a bucket and delete a bucket. Under resources, we can specify if this policy will apply to a specific S3 bucket or to all the buckets. Let's choose all resources. We also have the option to apply request conditions. For example, we can say that we only want this policy to apply if the request comes from a specified IP range but we won't do it for now. Let's review our policy and create it. I gave it a name, S3 bucket control policy. We can probably come up with a better one, but let's use this for now. And now there's a new type of policy, customer managed, and that's a policy that we created. Now we can use this policy and attach it to a role, a user, and a group. And whatever entity we'll assign this policy to, will have the permission to list, create, and delete buckets. Now let's take a look at users. There are two types of users that we can create. There are users that have access to the AWS management console. These are users like the one I'm using now that can use the web interface. The other type are users that have programmatic access. And these are users that can access the API or the CLI or the SDK using an access key ID and a secret access key. So the AWS management console access users will have a username and a password and will access the interface. And the users that have programmatic access will not have a username and password, but rather an access key ID and a secret access key. And they will access the different AWS services by making API requests or CLI requests or using the SDK. Let's create a CLI user. We'll then configure it using the CLI and then try to make some requests. We'll define our user to have a programmatic access and we'll call it CLI user. And here we can attach the user to a group. We can copy permissions from another user or we can attach existing policies directly. And here we can search for the policy that we created earlier and add it. But for now, let's not add it. Let's just create a user without any permissions and see what happens then. And here we get a warning that this user has no permissions, but we can still create it and get an access key ID and a secret key. After we create the user, we get the credentials. So let's use these credentials to configure our AWS CLI user. To use the CLI, you'll need to install the AWS CLI. I already have the CLI installed, but if you don't, there are instructions on how to do it for a Mac or a Windows computer. First, let's configure our user by calling AWS configure. It will ask us for the AWS access key ID and then the secret access key, default region name and an output format. Now we should be able to make requests to AWS. Let's get started by trying to list the buckets under our account. As you can see, even though we configured the user and it worked, we can't really make requests yet because our users has no permissions. 
And since this user doesn't have permissions to access S3 and listed buckets, we get access denied error. But we can easily fix that by attaching the policy that we created to the user that we just created now. Let's go back to the users list. We'll go to the CLI user and under permissions, we'll use add permissions, attach existing policies directly. We'll search for the permission we created and let's attach it to our user. Now our user has the permission that we created that contains the option to list buckets. So now we should be able to make our CLI request again and this time it should work. This time our request works and we get a list of buckets that we have under our account. Now that we see that our request works, let's go back to the user and remove the permissions that we gave him. So we'll go to users, CLI user. This is our permission and we'll just remove it. Now when we make a request, it should be declined. And yeah, we get access denied. We can no longer make the request to list buckets because we don't have the permission to do it. Now let's take a look at groups. Once we understand how users work, it's pretty simple to understand groups as well. With a group, we can attach policies and permissions directly to the group. Then we can assign a user to the group and this user will automatically inherit all the permissions that the group has. So instead of attaching permissions to a user, we attach them to a group and then attach the user to the group. So let's try it out. We'll create a new group. We'll call it CLI users. And now let's attach the policy we created earlier to the group. So now we have a group of CLI users that currently has zero users. So let's add our first user to it. We'll choose the CLI user that we created earlier that currently has no permissions at all. We'll add this user. Now, since our CLI user is part of the group, our request to list buckets should work once again. And as you can see, the request works now, but instead of attaching the permissions directly to the user, we attach them to the group and we assign the user to the group. And therefore, this user inherits the permissions that we want them to have through the group. Now let's remove our user from a group. And by now we saw how groups, users, and policies work. Last thing, we're going to look at our roles. A role is also an entity we can assign permissions to. Unlike users, roles don't have a username and a password or access tokens. Roles can be assigned to different AWS services. For example, when we create a Lambda function, we must assign a role to it. If we want our Lambda function to make requests to S3, we have to make sure that the role that we assign to the Lambda function has permissions to access S3. So when we create a role, we choose the service that we would like to assign our role to, and we set it up with permissions. And that is the difference between users and roles. A user will be an entity that has a username and a password or an access token and a secret, while roles don't. Roles have several other uses as well that we won't get into. For example, you can assign a role to another AWS account, and this way you can control the permissions that you give this account, or you can use them with a Cognito service or any other OpenID provider. So today we looked at how identity and access management works. It's an important service to understand because it controls all the permissions and the users that have access to your account and can control the AWS services in it. When we create users and give them permissions, we always have to make sure that we don't give them too many permissions they don't need, and this way reduce the risk of unauthorized access to our account. If you have any questions about this video or IAM in general, please leave a comment. And if you found this video useful, please like this video. That would help to make sure that more people will see it. Also, I'm going to upload more introductions to different AWS services. So if you like this video and you would like to be notified about the next videos I upload, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications.